together for John and Jill. DePaulo! There they go, there they go, parents of the bride. John and Jill DePaulo looking good, looking so good. Next, make some noise out there for parents of the groom. I'm talking about David and Debbie Silverman. Oh, yeah. yeah, clap it up for them. Come on now. All the way down, all the way down. There it is, there it is. All right, y'all keep it rolling for your bridesmaids and your groomsmen. I'm talking about. Abby, Olivia, Jamie, Ashley, Lindsay, Devin, Kelsey, Lindsay, Svetlana, John, Jay, Sean, Alex, Jake, Vito, Jeff, and Steve. That's a fine looking bridal party right there, coming in hot. Coming in hot all the way down. Make some room, come all the way down. Squeeze around. There you go, there you go, there you go. All right, all right, make some noise. Special welcome for your best man and matron of honor, Mikey Silverman and Tabata DePaulo. All right, you guys are there. I got my best man and my maid of honor in there. We raise Mikey here. Come on down, Mikey. Are oh, we already good? We're good. Okay, here we go. Switch it up. Oh, they came in. They snuck in with the crew. I was trying to give you all a special shout out, but that's okay. Here we go, ladies and gents. I need you to get on your feet. Help me celebrate the reason why we're here. I said, stand up. Stand up. For the first time, as husband and wife, please make some noise for the new Mr. and Mrs. Adam and Katie Silverman.
Welcome, welcome everyone. We are so delighted to have you here tonight. We know many people have traveled many states to get here, so we are so very grateful for that. We also know that many holiday plans may have been uh, worked around this wedding, and truly we, we feel so blessed to have everybody here and sharing this with us and sharing in Katie and Adam tonight. We hope you have a great time this evening and we'd like to really thank Debbie and David for last night, the rehearsal dinner. It was uh, outstanding. What's that? That was outstanding. It was an uh, outstanding time and uh, it, it really started off the festivities and we hope you all enjoy this evening also. Um, we have a blessing that uh, we'd like our friend Calvin Foster to say. Calvin is uh, Captain U.S. Navy. He's probably over there. Is he there? Oh, there he is, Captain U.S. Navy. He is on uh, active duty, operations director, second fleet, taking care and keeping us safe uh, and our country safe. Thank you, Calvin. Awesome. We love you guys. Thank you. Please join with me as we pray for this, uh, not this meal, but this incredible family. Eternal God, eternal Father, we celebrate this day that you've created to celebrate Katie and Adam. We claim the promise of Isaiah when he said, the Lord has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride, adorns herself with jewels. We affirm the Proverbs that say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your pathway straight. Let them submit to each other, and ultimately to you, while, they protect, while you protect them from evil. Light the lamp of their heart with your never-ending love. And like you transform the caterpillar and the book butterfly right over this dance stage, refashion these two into one and unify them in your spirit so they may soar through the highs and lows in their journey together. Help everyone in this room and their entire community encourage them on this pathway as we pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. That was awesome. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Hi everyone, I am Tabata De Paula, Katie's sister-in-law. When I was asked to be a matron of honor, I didn't really understand what that meant. Pardon my French, oops, my Portuguese. I knew the maid of honor, but I never knew that was a different name for a married woman. <laughs> so now I have learned how important it is. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about Katie and I can go on and on all night. Although my speech won't cover half of the stories that I have about Katie. And I'm sure you will all have even more great stories. Katie is more than a book cover, an integral circle, a great speaker, a writer, and a Chanel lover. <laughs> she is sassy, is strong, empower woman, a sister, a great aunt, a godmother, a daughter, a friend. She inspires everyone around her. She's always focusing on self-improvement and she will go in deep stuff with you. She will accept who you are. I'm getting emotional. <laughs> and for who you are and not judge you. Since she was a child, going back her childhood, I hear stories of her being bossy and having the strongest leadership skills. She would play the game house with her brother, Johnny, and tell him everything in the game making. She would tell him, you're gonna be the daddy and I'm the mom and you better follow my directions. <laughs> Super bossy, right guys? So when I met Katie, she was figuring out a lot of things in her life and focusing a lot on her career. She wasn't really looking for love. She was just, you know, letting the destiny come and a love showed up for her. Um, 
she's always going to look on the bright side, even in the darkest moments. I've seen those dark moments a little bit with her. And she'll find a way to make you feel good, even if that's not how she's feeling at the moment. She will show up dressing nice anywhere you see her. <laughs> At least you look good. <laughs> when she met Adam, they were like working on a fr friendship at the time. She wasn't really looking for love. She didn't realize that that guy that was talking to her on a daily basis was the one. They built a strong connection before getting to the serious stuff. Times go on, Adam invited her on a date. On their first date, she met his parents. <laughs> well, Adam wasn't wasting any time. Somehow, he knew she was the one before even she knew it. Nowadays, they match outfits, they work out together, they are inseparable. So inseparable that another day, he was, to, he was in his bachelor party, and he was a little bit drunk, and he called her, he was calling, telling everything, like his best friend, hey, I'm drinking, but I'm doing good. And I, <laughs> and I asked her, like, Katie, are you all good? And are you worried at all? She's like, no, sister, he's just having fun with his body. And that answer made me so happy, because I know there's trust trust in their relationship. Also, I don't know if you all know, Adam stopped gluten and sugar-free for her. I mean, what type of guy does that for a woman? Well, Adam is the one, he does that. I am so excited to continue watching you two grow together as you build memories as husband and wife. One thing is for sure, from sickness to strength, by finding ways to get better. From death to life, by helping others. Katie, turns his struggles into opportunity. Adam, you are a lucky man. To all here celebrating Adam and Katie, let's raise our glasses. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's have fun, guys. <laughs> My name is Michael Silverman, and I am Adam's little brother. Tabitha, great job, I love you. I would like to start off by thanking John and Joe for hosting an amazing wedding. This is absolutely stunning and beyond the Silverman dreams. We have high expectations, and we couldn't have pictured a more perfect wedding. Thank you. Additionally, I can't tell you how happy the whole Silverman family is to welcome your daughter into our family. Katie has, been, has brightened our lives more than you can imagine. At the same time, you've treated Adam like a son and welcomed him into your family with open arms. Our two families have become one this evening, and that means Adam and I are both happy and finally excited for our cool new parents. I would like to give my biggest thanks to our actual parents for being such great sports. They put up with two very rambunctious kids. If you met me and Adam today, you'd be like, wow, those kids are probably a handful. And let me assure you, that's not the half of it. It was way, way worse. Our parents don't know the half of it, and what they do know, I've been forbidden from telling this evening. Mom and Dad, we love you so much. We thank you for all your sacrifice. Adam and I could not be where we are today without you, and that is for sure. Adam, you've always paved the way for us. At a young age, I always remember you getting in trouble or doing something stupid that got you hurt. Adam always pushed the limits, allowing me to skate by with less scrutiny, yes? That is correct, I was the good one for the first 15 years. Adam started sneaking out before I did, started experimenting with smoking before I did, 
was the first child to have a teacher call the house. Well, a teacher, a high school principal, a camp counselor, a guidance counselor, a superintendent, a dean, and let's say every other authority figure you can think of. For all the trouble he got in, he wasn't the best at getting away with it. And for that, I am thankful. I had an older brother that let me learn from his oh so many mistakes. Adam and I went on to attend the same college at the University of Hartford. For context, that's the only school that admitted me without writing an essay. <laughs> Just so you understand the prestige of this institution that we went to. Regardless of the easy admission process, the real reason I went to Hartford was for Adam. For me, nothing was more comforting than going to school with my older brother. I was cool by association and instantly able to get away with a lot more as a freshman. Not that he could beat anyone up, but having two silver mints is always better than one. I know he was probably annoyed I followed him to college, but for me, it was a no-brainer. Adam and I put our mark on that school, and it's some of the best memories of my life. Thank you for letting me share the spotlight with you at Hartford, at least until mom and dad asked me to return home. <laughs> when we left college, Adam went on to have an illustrious career at CoStar, outshining us all with his big bucks and fancy clothes, most of which have now been handed down to me. Thank you. You've made both of us look like a million bucks, and I wouldn't be half as cool or stylish without you. Adam accomplished so much so fast in his career that he spent the rest of his free time searching for the one. The Silverman side of the room knows how hard Adam searched and how picky he was. Let me assure you, he went to a lot of interviews. When, when Adam had a potential candidate, he he had a very famous routine of bringing them all to Sunday dinner at Houston's in Bethesda. Typically, this would be the first and last time we would see this young lady. <laughs> Almost no one made it to the second dinner. That was different with Katie. I remember her coming to dinner the first time and knew something was different. She was willing to challenge Adam and most importantly, wasn't afraid to tell him to shut up. Adam was always looking for something special, someone confident, intellectual, and one who was beautiful on the inside and out. And he clearly found that in you, Katie. <laughs> Katie, my parents and I are so happy to have you as part of the Silverman family. You bring so much joy to our family and have been a blessing to all of us. Even me, even though you act like a fourth parent at times. Adam being the third. I love how much you and Adam believe in each other and push one another to be better every day. Adam is happier than I've ever seen him, and that's because of you. So please join me in raising a toast to Adam and Katie. Remember, two Silvermans are better than one, and that together you can accomplish everything. We wish you many years of joy and happiness. We love you. Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? So I'm racking my brain. Because I saw somewhere, and I can't remember where, that if you ask an Italian father, for a favor on the day of his daughter's wedding, he must grant it. But you had to ask him before he started his speech. Katie is so nervous about what I might say. <clears throat> but I had to remind her that she wrote a whole book. And we didn't know what she was going to say. So, have you all seen Katie's book? It's called, at least, it's called At Least My Dad Looks Good. And Jill asked me if I had read it. And I said, Jill, I've lived it. I don't have to read it. Anything Katie wanted me to know, she's told me, 
or she figured it out on her own. But there was a night that we took Katie and Adam out to dinner to celebrate the publishing of the book. And I did what any father would do. I had to cram for the exam, right? So I was reading it digitally on my iPad. And I typed in, in the search bar, dad, father, greatest man in the world. And I read all I needed to read. I'll be selling it later this weekend, all weekend, out of my trunk to pay for all this. <laughs> but seriously, Katie, your mother and I are very proud of you for accomplishing writing a book. That's a big deal. And the fact, <laughs> the fact that you were so raw and putting your, your trials and tribulations out there, and I know why you did it, to help other people talking about your illness and the loss of your brother, and it's very, very noble that you got that done, and we thank you for that. So this is my second wedding, the finale, and tonight I announced my retirement from the USWA, <laughs> United States Wedding Association. <laughs> Katie called me a few weeks in and she said, Mom, and Debbie don't have any opinions about anything. I can't get them, they're, they're just, I mean, they want us to be married and everything, but they're just not interested in the details. So I dug out my notes for my first wedding and we made a lot of this happen. And I said, why don't you talk to David? She didn't know dresses, colors of dresses for bridesmaids. Talk to David and between David and I, we got a lot of these decisions made, right David? So we can certainly laugh about that because if you know Jill or Debbie or Katie, you know that nothing could be further from the truth, that everything was well accounted for and planned. And I just have to give a shout out also to Strawberry Milk, that's the company, with Anna, Julie, Milena, and Erica. And what a fine job you've all done for us. And Katie and Adam, seriously, I hope you can tell the support you have around your love for each other and, and moving forward. I certainly can. The truth was, in the beginning, I was just glad I got to save the date. So, I guess I don't need this anymore. So, this, the wedding is a, it's a major production. And I just thought from my notes, I would tell you just one thing about it. So there's a hierarchy of people here tonight. So can, you could probably guess who the most important person in the wedding party is, right? No, not really? I had to learn this too. It's Katie, the bride. Okay, well, let's see how intuitive all this is. How about who is the second most important person here tonight? the mother of the bride. It gets interesting. Who is the third most important person here tonight? The mother of the groom, Debbie. Who is the fourth? The father of the bride. You do rank here, Adam, you're fifth. And David, you're sixth, and I have been a fog before, father of the groom. And then I want to have a shout out to our beautiful, handsome, and gorgeous women in the wedding party. Y'all look beautiful. And how about our very handsome young ring bear? John Francis DePaula III. And I don't, the reason I bring all this up is without you all, and I mean every single one of you, we don't have much of a wedding, right? It's just the families getting together, which that'd be nice, but the community and, and everything you all bring to it, and like Jill said before, all the trouble you, you went through to get here, um, we really appreciate that. So I'm gonna take you back. Chuck, is that you over there? I'm gonna take you back, if you don't mind, to Friday, September 25th, 1987. I was in the birth, there's gonna be a test at the end of this. You guys better be listening up over there. I see you, Chuck. I was in the birthing room, much like many of the fathers here, as a useless idiot, really. 
trying to reassure Jill everything was going to be okay with the birth when I had no idea. Remember, back then there was no gender reveal. We had no idea what we were having. And there was no iPhone. I have no idea what Jill and I did in a room together for 10 hours. We <laughs> must have talked to each other. But when that doctor called me over and I looked at that human being that had come out of Jill, it was the most beautiful creature I had ever seen in my life. And I, and I, I specifically remember, because our parents, Jill's parents and my parents, had come up to Holy Cross to see, to see what we had, really. And I ran outside. The only thing I could say was, she's beautiful. And I remember that very distinctly. And I remember, as we wheeled Katie out, and she was this little thing, and, and I think back then you were in there for about three days, and every detail is taken care of for the baby. They wash them and wipe them and clean them and all that stuff. And then they wheeled Jill out, Jill out, and I remember we had a gray Honda Accord, and I brought it around, and I put this baby in this, in this car seat. She's, you know, kind of flailing or whatever. And I remember, <laughs> I remember looking around saying, all right, how many nurses are coming with us? Seriously. And then Jill and I drove away, and to me, that was my little girl. But for Jill, this was Project Katie. <laughs> Jill worked full time with Katie. I remember Hungry Hungry Hippo. I remember the Caterpillar game out of felt that you made, Jill. And remember, there was no Amazon or anything back then. I remember the sewing machine teaching her how to sew and the kitchen set and Joni Bartell's children's lullabies. And I remember the rocking chair in the back of our Bowie townhouse. And the result of all this was Katie became as smart, industrious, and as beautiful as Jill. Now, my biggest fear, my biggest fear was I had this innocent little baby girl, and I had to send her off to school as she got older. And I remember really thinking, she's going to get harassed or bullied or the boys are going to what you know, I was like, I was really nervous about it. So she starts school and about, I don't know, you remember Jill, two, three weeks later, I don't know, maybe a month, we start getting calls from the school that Katie's challenging the teachers. <laughs> so I think Katie might have wanted the boys to sit one way or the curriculum needed to have this or the other. And I never worried about Katie after that. My memories of Katie growing up are softball, sports, obviously, tennis, cross country. Anytime we would run an errand in the van, she would have her glasses on. She'd have a book and a pencil or a pen every single time. She never had downtime. I don't know what she was doing. She was like six, seven, eight years old. I guess she was writing her book. Um, she got into student government. She was elected uh, class president, did extremely well. and with came time for college, she visited 19 schools and decided on Vanderbilt University and she finished with a bachelor's degree. Then, uh, let's go back to high school, she starts dating. So, I remember coming home one day and there's a guy in my, in my house and her and Kate, him and Katie are doing these campaign posters. And I'm like, Jill, who's this dude in my house? She's like, Oh, he's the campaign manager for her. She's running for class president. So I said, okay. So I find out a couple, you know, a week later, they're dating. So that runs its course. And then the next guy was like a fundraiser or crowdsourcing for what she was doing. That ran its course. And then the next guy was like a life coach or business coach. And I'm like, she's not dating. She's building a cabinet. She had her own little board of directors. And then Katie met Adam. So I hear there's this other guy, and they're going to go play tennis. And I'm like, that's good. Is he an instructor? I said, no. I said, what's, he, what's his job? What's he do for Katie? He didn't do anything for Katie. I said, well, they all have functions. He's, he's got to have a function. <laughs> she said, I think they're just going out to play tennis. I said, this one's different. He might have a shot. So we have to meet Adam. So it's very ironic that two years to yesterday, 
two years ago to the date, November 26th, we beat Adam. So we're gonna have dinner at where we were last night, Joe Stone Crab House. And he's traveling with Katie now, so he's probably late. <laughs> and the poor guy was so nervous. I'm in the lobby, Jill's sitting there, and we're at the crab house, and this guy walks in, comes right over to me. Hi, I'm Adam, Mr. Paula. I was like, hi, Adam, where's my daughter? <laughs> So I turn around, Katie's opening the door for herself or whatever, and he, she comes in. <laughs> so we sat down and have a, had a really nice two-hour interrogation, I mean dinner. <laughs> and I found out that this guy was really buttoned up. I really enjoyed his company. He was definitely different. And I could tell he came from a great family. And um, it was just different. I knew it was different immediately. Adam, if you don't know, and I'm sure this side of the room does, but maybe this side of the room doesn't, he's a wonderful Jewish boy. <laughs> and Katie is respectful and, and thinks she knows the culture, but I know a little more about it. And she says, the next day, Dad, what do you think of Adam? I said, Katie, I think he's a real mensch. And she hung up and said, how dare you? <laughs> I said, Katie, Katie, that's a good thing. That's a great thing. <laughs> but I have found Katie, uh, I'm sorry, Adam is smart, honestly. We didn't hear that last night, but I know he is. <laughs> Intuitive, and he's got a second level thinking. And I've never probably told you this, but I will tell you now that a lot of people take it, it, take it for what it is, right? And they see things, and Adam has a way about him that he kind of, he repackages it for you. And he is able to help me out on some things. If I see something that maybe it's got me mad or what, he'll say, well, why don't you look at it this way? And that, that's really great thinking. It really is. And I'm really, really proud of that. And I know we said this too, and I, we said it a lot last night. It's very evident. But Katie and Adam together are just phenomenal. They really are. And as a father, it gives us, and, and as a mother, it gives Jill and I great uh, a sense of warmth of how you guys are together. You lift each other up. Um, and not only is that good for you, it's good for the people around you. I kind of learn from you a little bit. It's, it's, it's kind of uncanny. So um, it's really great to watch you guys. So Adam wants to ask for Katie's hand in marriage. So he did it twice. It's not what you think. So we're in Sarasota and we're taking a little family trip and Adam, uh, Katie, and, and uh, Jill go inside, and they're, they're sitting in a, in a restaurant, and Adam and I are in, the, um, in a car, and he's like, he's telling me, he goes, I'm not real, I don't know if I'm real happy with my profession, my job, I'm not sure, and, and I want to get this wrapped up to get on, you know, on with my life, and I love your daughter, and I'm like, well, Adam, and I really wouldn't give anybody else this advice, Adam, but... I said, you know, sometimes you don't have to have everything laid out. I said, if that's what's really in your heart, you'll figure it out. You're a smart guy, you got a great degree, a master's degree. Um, I said, I think you're gonna be okay. So think about, you know, going to that next level. He goes, okay, then can I marry your daughter? <laughs> I said, not so fast. I said, I want you to think about this, get your thoughts together, and let's get Jill involved. And I thought about, why'd I do that? And it wasn't because I couldn't give my blessing or make that decision, but I did not want Jill to be robbed of the warmth and the love that you felt for our daughter, and I knew you would nail it. So the second time he comes over, and I think a couple months go by, and he's setting up a a time to come over and see us. And I said, is Katie coming over? He said, no, I gotta do this by myself. I said, great. He comes in, he's got this full written uh, um, pledge of his love and support for Katie and what he's gonna do. And, and uh, he's going through it and he's getting teary eyed and I'm getting teary eyed and Jill's the only one's like stoic about it, you know? <laughs> and at the end I said, if Katie says no, Jill, we gotta adopt this kid. I mean, <laughs> maybe. Maybe Debbie and David will let us share custody because I was blown away. I really was. And I want to thank you publicly for that respect you showed to Jill and I.
You know, and I, I just wrote something here recently. Um, you'll find out one day what that means when you have your own kids and what that means to have that. Um, I do want to personally and publicly thank David, Debbie, Mikey, Millie, and Scotty for showing Katie so much love and bringing her, her into your family so warmly. I mean, not just, hey, she's okay. You guys love her. I mean, David, you went out and got t-shirts of Katie. Um, <laughs> it's a business competitive thing, so I won't say what, you know, but it was awesome. And, and I, I, don't, I can't even put into words what that means for, for me, for my daughter. So thank you for that. So, so my advice, please don't look for perfection in each other. I've been trying to tell Jill this for years. <laughs> Give each other a break, okay? Keep doing what you do because you guys do it so well. The way you're, you're together and, and so in love and, and Adam, you're just great with Katie, you really are. Um, I'm learning a lot, like I said. Um, and life is hard enough without internal fighting. And it can be filled with bliss, no matter what happens. And you never know, right? So it's a tool you guys should keep, and uh, um, I just hope you never grow out of it. So today we join two people, two religions, and two families. And the, the toast here, if you can raise your glasses. Katie and Adam, we wish you all the best that God has in store for you. We are so happy about our extended family. We feel so much nakis about your union, our new mushbuka. Pretty good? Pretty good? And Katie and Adam, Adam mazel tov, mazel tov.